praise the Lord. Father, this day as we gather in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we stand and call as him for what he has accomplished in our behalf. Our sins which we could not atone for, sins which we could not pay for other than the eternal judgment in hell itself have been washed away by the cleansing power of Jesus Christ and his blood. The waters of baptism this day remind us of the power of Jesus Christ to make us clean and holy and a bright city to make our hearts to us by the fight. Hearts worthy of the presence and of the Father, teeth are to you. Pray that you paint those fans of hopes and picture the promises of baptism. Then speak the best place. But so in the event itself, I pray that we would write especially on the hearts of those who will be baptized today, indelibly that it may not ever be erased this moment and what it means for them unto eternity. And pray that goodness and mercy would follow every one of the 11 young people who will be baptized today, their entire life, and that they may one day dwell in your house forever. Because who we may call today, Jesus Christ, our Lord and ever Lord and Savior. His name is right. Amen. I believe. Okay. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord for those who have gathered here. And so we have brought the Lord into Christ the baptism of the beast. And we will enter these waters just beyond this place here. At the close of this service. I invite you to turn this. You have a means to do so this morning to Joshua chapter 3. In Joshua 3, we have a baptism of the God, a place called the Kent. He receives its vain and its result of the Kent. And the children of God, then God, by miracle, and they brought us, let us be from one side of the river to the other side of the river, which was the promised land of Canaan. My aim this morning in preaching is to proclaim the hope of baptism from the greater context of the covenant. The Word of God has been speaking to the salvation work of Jesus Christ on every single page. In the book of Genesis, as it opens to the exodus of God's people, which we touch upon today, to the fulfillment of what was prefigured and prophesied in the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in the New Testament, who himself gave us the command to go into all nations, to preach the gospel, and to make disciples, and to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. With that in mind, we turn back to the Bible to strengthen the people of God at all, and this meant God intervened to bring them to the the water so would otherwise destroy blood to the hope of salvation. Would you stand as you're able for the reading of God's word today? Considering you're hearing the word of God in Joshua chapter 3, verses 1 through 13. Then Joshua arose early in the morning. And they set out from Shinnah, and they came to the Jordan. He and all the people who were there before they passed over. Yet three days, the officers went to the camp and commanded the people. As soon as he seen the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, he very by the bitter the priest. But if you set out with your plate, there shall be destiny you and I and all about it. Now come near it in order that you may go the way you shall go. For you have not passed this way before. Then Joshua said to the people, Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And Joshua said to the priests, Take up the ark of the covenant and pass on before the people. So they took up the ark of the covenant and went before the people. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. And as for you, command the priests who bear the Ark of the Covenant, when you come to the brink of the waters of the Jordan, you shall stand still in the Jordan. And Joshua said to the people of Israel, Come, hear and listen to the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, Here is how you shall know that the God is among you. But that if he will, without fail, drive out before you the Canaanites, the Gentiles, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Gergeshites, the Amorites, the Jebusites. And so let we all be dark, the Lord is going to be born you get into the church. Now therefore take twelve men from the tribes of Israel, from each tribe of man, 
And when the soles of the feet of the priests bearing the ark of the Lord, Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off from the smoke, and the waters will be down from the bottom, shall stand and go down. See, where the people set out from their tents to pass over the Jordan with the priests bearing the ark of the covenant before the people. And as soon as those bearing the ark had come as far as the door, uh, Jordan, and the feet of the priests bearing the ark were dipped in the brink of the waters, and now the Jordan overflows all its banks throughout the time of the harvest, the waters coming down from above stood and rose up in a heap very far away at Adam, the city that is beside Zarathath, Zer and those flowing down in the sea of the air above with salt sea that complete the company, and the people passed over. Opposing Jericho. This is the word of God. You may be seated. I've read a couple of extra verses there. There are quite a few verses in Tubal which document this event. Significant things are happening at this moment. Now let me suggest to you this morning that the concept of baptism, what we are participating in today, this concept, this idea precedes the New Testament church. Thousands of years before Jesus came, if anyone talked to one of these people, the Israelites who crossed from the wilderness, crossed the Jordan into the promised land, this generation about what we are doing right here today, they would no doubt liken it to the events at Gilgal that we just read. Upon crossing the Jordan River into the promise of Canaan. Likewise, we can greater appreciate their experience in light of our service here in Cross Lake, Minnesota, at a river, at a dam, at a lake where there's water, today you will do something similar. The name Gilgal, by the way, is explained in Joshua 5, verse 9. Here the Lord says the following, Today I have rolled away reproach. That means the shame, the guilt. I have rolled away the reproach from you. Gilgal, it's that they need to take really and fully walk. We can appreciate this event all the more in light of Matthew 28, 2 through 7, where the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus, by the way, is the Greek form of Joshua. Jesus, the greater Joshua, is punctuated. The resurrection of Jesus is punctuated. It's introduced, it's proclaimed by way of significant, miraculous circumstances. An earthquake, an angel, lightning, and again, a rolling away of a great stone. And here, I submit to you, the hope of Gilgal extends to all eternity. That is, in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord, Yahweh, the Lord, has rolled away the reproach of our sin. The tension from this moment, the redemptive history of the people of God, is your penalty rates, penalty rates. In addition to the liberty of life we see here in the petition, Speaking over and over again of the of these men, the text itself of stomach to move. The voice of the Lord speaking, symbolic imagery, touch upon a bin say, the miracle of the Lord. How did it like to follow? And ceremonies for the people of God so that they would forever realize what God had done in their midst at this moment when he rolled away their shame of slavery in Egypt and ushered them by his sovereign miraculous hand into the land of the promise. Now let me give you a heading and four points to the case. Talking to one, a few these verses we read and a few extra as well. Like the Jordan crossing, Baptism is the following. Baptism is, first of all, possible by priesthood. Joshua 3, 14 through 17. Secondly, like the Jordan crossing, baptism is a forever memorial. Uh, chapter 4, verse 1 through 7. You see the parallel. Three, baptism, like the Jordan crossing, is preparation for battle. Interesting. And then finally, baptism is, like the Jordan crossing, a covenant of sign. First of all, possible by priesthood. Did you notice something interesting? We might ask the question, 
So when God stopped the waters, reminding us of the Red Sea, by the way, I'm sure you caught the parallels. And the Red Sea, Moses lifts his staff all night long. The eastward wind blows until this huge body of water stands in two heaps. And God makes a way, safe passage for his people across this body of water to save them from the Egyptian enemies that would otherwise destroy. Well, similarly here, God intervenes. This time, the waters stand in one heap. Where, though? Is it about 100 yards within eyesight of where the crossing was? Not exactly. Did you catch it? Verse 16. The waters coming down from above stood and rose up in a heap very far away at Adam. Seeing that is inside Sarah and those flowing down toward the sea of the air above the salt sea were completely cut off and the people passed me over. So think of it, think of this picture. The Ark of the Covenant is that uh, container for the law of God, the angels above. It has poles so it's not to touch the holy and the sacred. And then the priests upon their shoulders bear this load and then they approach the river. And as soon as their feet step into this river, the hand of God creates a dam, just like that one over there. But imagine the invisible hand of God stopping the floodwaters of the rushing Jordan from flowing. He doesn't do it within eyesight of the crossing. He does it far away, upriver, at a place, interestingly, called Adam. The waters coming down from above were dammed up, as we imagine, uh, at, by the hand of the Lord Almighty. Picturing this, not uh, very far away at the city of Adam, the, the source of these waters, as it were, was stopped. Sin and its wages, wages I submit to you, are in a picture. The wages of sin, death, this instrument of water as an instrument of judgment, by the way, in the days of Noah, and here it is pictured as an instrument of judgment as well, is what we in our sin deserve. However, well, and this and this, by the way, this guilt and this sin and this reproach, it stems all the way back to Adam, our first parents. That is, the sin that comes from Adam and Eve prevents entry to the promised land of restoration and covenant fulfillment unless a priest, unless the Lord would make a way. These waters flow from the city of Adam, just like sin has flown into and corrupted all of the human race from Adam. Would there be a new Adam who could stop the waters of judgment and make the way for the people of God into the promised land a restored relationship and covenant with him? Yes, there would. And it's pictured here. Just like the Jordan crossing, we too will have safe passage through the waters of judgment, death, unto heaven one day, but it is only possible by priesthood. We call in the days of Noah, there was an instrument of judgment that would flood and destroy every last sinner, save one man and his family, a son of grace in the eyes of the Lord. This would be Noah, Noah in a sense, serving as a priest for his family, received the word of God and prepared that instrument of salvation, the ark. And thus that ark, built according to the word of God, carried eight people through the waters of judgment until that ark rested on the mountain of Ararat and they received as an inheritance a new world. Same picture. Noah's legacy. The legacy of his legs here. They picture yet, yes, there is a way to be saved from the judgment of God for your sins, but it's only possible by priesthood. We notice it here. What had to happen? Notice the specific instruction. It says in verse 4, that there shall be a distance between you. I get that is the Ark of the Covenant, about 2,000 cubits of light. Do not come near it, instructions to the people, in order that you may know the way it shall go. We have not passed this way before. These were specific instructions, so as not to cross the Jordan by any other way. A priest must enter first, picturing of working the judgment. And then he must stand there until those waters, at the speed of you know, traveling liquid, multiplied by the distance of Adam, that city in the distance, would finally run dry. And then, and only then, following these priests, would a way be made 
across the waters that would otherwise be spoiled unto the promised land. A priest must enter first. He must absorb, absorb the judgment on our behalf. This picture is even more. He must be the substitute object of God's wrath. By the way, when the feet of Jesus Christ were pierced with the nails of crucifixion, at the moment when he cried his sin, and when his body was laid in that tomb, that was our great high priest. Jesus, our priest, stepped into the waters of death and was laid in that grave, absorbing the instrument or the judgment, death itself, of God on behalf of his people. And what does the Bible say? Jesus himself tells us, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. Look to me, follow me, stay 2,000 cubits back, so as to follow straight through death, unscathed, unto eternal life. That is the only way to enter in to the wages of sin and to be able to cross what would otherwise destroy unto the place of reconciliation, promised land, and hope and fellowship with God forever. This is what we read of, by the way, in our worship text in Romans chapter 6. Gilgal and baptism come together in this passage. Verse 3, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? We see the picture? He went through the Jordan, as it were. He went through death on our behalf. He was baptized, if you will, in advance and to make a way for his people to absorb the judgment and punishment they deserve. It goes further, verse 4. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might be raised. Yes. We too might walk in newness. That's it. That is Jesus Christ, our high priest. We enter into death. He reached to verse. Jesus finished first. And through him and only according to him will we be saved. So think of it. The priest step into the water, the waters part, and then the people pass. Jesus is crucified on Calvary. His feet are pierced with the punishment of our sin. Therefore, in Jesus, following Jesus, and sucking him as our Savior, young people who will be baptized today, you will go under the water, you will come back up as a picture of passing safely through the waters of judgment because your priest, Jesus Christ, died for your sins. And thus, the picture of Gilgal is fulfilled in Jesus Christ. The Jordan crossing, like baptism, is part was possible by priesthood. The Jordan crossing, like the Jordan crossing, secondly, baptism is a forever memorial. Now, us elders have interviewed the baptizees today, and you young people will remember a, a, something we told every one of you. Do not forget this day. Write it in your mind. Write it down. Uh, go back and visit the footage uh, of the video. Take a photo. Frame it. Do something to not forget this day. Where do we learn this? We learn this from passages right here at Gilgal, for instance. Chapter 4, verse 1. When all the nations had finished passing over the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Take twelve men from the people, from each tribe of man, and command them, saying, Take twelve stones from here, out of the midst of the Jordan, from the very place where the priest's feet stood firmly, and bring them over with him, and lay them down in the place where you watched tonight. Joshua called the twelve men of the people of Israel. Of course, they do this. Verse 6 tells us why that this may be a sign among you. When your children ask in time to come, what do these stones mean to you? Then you shall tell them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it passed over the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. So these stones shall be to the people of Israel a memorial forever. Like the Jordan crossing in Gilgal, baptism for you who will be baptized today is a memorial forever. Do not forget it. Remember this day with a little bit of cold breeze. You might be a little nervous. Testify to your faith in moments here. Let that sign and seal upon your heart and a memory that you will not forget. The, because today, like this day, is a significant moment 
of passing, it pictures of passing from the reproach of sin and to salvation in Jesus Christ. Now when the people crossed the river at this time, they received a promised land welcome. And the picture was this. Yesterday, you were a wandering exile uh, to, with the reproach of Egypt still upon you, people without a land, exiles, ex-slaves, wandering for 40 years. That was you yesterday. Today, upon crossing this river, and setting your feet on the threshold of God's promised land, you are a citizen of Canaan. Yesterday in exile, today a citizen. Welcomed into the favor, the presence, and abundance of salvation's promised reward. Likewise, young people, today at your baptism, we welcome you, in this formally speaking, into the church of Jesus Christ. You're no longer an outcast. You are no longer a lost and dead in your trespasses and sins. But baptism is something like an initiation ceremony where we acknowledge and make to your profession of faith and your obedience to the Lord in baptism that you are members of the Church of Jesus Christ and you are citizens of heaven. Yesterday you were a sinner destined to hell, but in the waters of baptism we picture you crossed in Jesus Christ, your priest, into the promise of eternal life in him. You are now a citizen of glory. So let's build an altar. What did they do? They took stones. This paints a picture in our minds and the priest standing there. All the people have crossed, but the priest remains standing long enough where they tell 12 strong dudes, you know, from one from each tribe, we double at their stigma and gather resources to build this altar and to uh, set it up on the opposite bank. That's the more by the sovereign hand with the priest. It was he kicks the river dry, this thing us. Says to vault building the others. Well, you might ask, why the spectacular moment? Why did God do this? I did not ordain that this helps. Uh, when the river was flooded, only oh, would take. Because he did not want them to ever forget this meaning the power and the significance of this moment. Bumps their efforts to memory according to his word so that they and future generations that will forget. Yeah. So you will update to your Hebrew the story of your own baptism. I remember my own. I was baptized when I was young too, seven years old. There were palm trees made out of construction paper taped to the bathtub at my grandparents' home. We had a small family, you know, or a small church gathering. We didn't have a family down, as I recall, but we had a need for a baptism. So we found water in the middle of the Minnesota winter by a bat in a bathtub at my grandparents' house, which he modified with a little uh, plywood and plastic to make it just deep enough to drown to dunk. Oh, it's a drum. To dunk a seven-year-old. It was a for Jesus Christ saying no. So, and that, now it's a bump in my bed. It was a center that I remember it. I had told my children that my and they think you created in your mind real this moment. So one day, Lord willing, you will tell your children your baptism story, and God will use the multi generations of Christian families to continue, should he tarry, to, to populate his promised land with another soul being saved from their sin and trusting Jesus Christ to bring them across the waters of death into heaven eternal. And the sin will save you all. That's the sign of the angel on the day when he was resurrected. Build an altar. Like the Jordan crossing, baptism is a forever memorial. Some of you have already been baptized. Many, I trust, in this congregation gathered here. Today's baptism provides a great opportunity for us. Remember your own baptism on this day. And thank you for what I present in the living personal way. It's a salvation. Remember the same keeping power of your priest, Jesus Christ, to be the way through death. That in one every day, also some of it in returns, we will be found of crazy man in his fellowship with his people, a solemn in glory. Third, like the Jordan crossing, Baptism is possible by priesthood. It's a forever memorial. And thirdly, it's preparation vow. Notice in our text again, 3 verse 10. 
a few interesting details. Come to the fore as we read, Joshua said, Here is how you shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites, Hivites, Hittites, Perizzites, Virgashites, Amorites, and Jebusites, all enemies of the people of God, who resisted God's purposes and plan, all covenant breakers, all who would eventually de declare war, uh, and so, so to speak, upon the people of God. By the way, as you continue to read in Joshua, the very next step is Jericho. Kids, do you remember that story? That's the city with huge imposing walls. Once again, the Lord intervened sovereignly. They marched around, the walls fell down, and they conquered their foes. So at the crossing of the Jordan, God did not promise, now that you are in the promised land, there would be no conflict, but he did give them a sign that if they clung to him, if they did not forget that altar at Gilgal, they would be victorious. That's promising that the Jordan was preparation for the battle. And we to Canaan, what we thought about for his time was, he by uh, years, totally would not be faithful to all the He only visited this out, right, as if they remembered the Lord, their Lord, and were faithful to him, they were nevertheless assured victory. The God who can part the floodwaters of Jordan, who can split the Red Sea by the wind of his power, can tear down the walls of Jericho. It gets two hard enemies people run. Young people, baptized today, make no mistake, you too will face trial, said to you, and enemies of the cross in your life. Many of your friends will not understand what you are doing today, perhaps. People will make me this food of me. A superstitious ritual to be bad. Well, will, you, will you stand in the face of the one of the last teams? We are telling you that will if you will get the gospel of you. Bad doesn't say that. You will take it against temptation, against air pressure, against wickedness, and against the enemy. Right? Learn your war as you would end up walked with it. In time, we will, not, we will be able to participate in the great privilege of sharing your faith, pointing to Jesus Christ, and in sharing your faith, leading perhaps another soul across the waters of judgment that they might be baptized and turn their lives over to Jesus. Chapter 4, verses 12 through 13. Across some group of the sons of Gad, have tribe of Manasseh passed over armed before the people of Israel. As Moses had told them, about 40,000 ready for war passed before the Lord battled through the plains of Jericho. On that day, the Lord exalted Joshua in the sight of all Israel, and they stood in awe of him, just as they stood in awe of Lord all the days of his wives. He used this moment of baptism and the assurance that it represents to tell the devil, you cannot have me, I will all in his trials. If this is an arm and cross, in other words, with your back, so the piety breaks me into the other most are the spirit. We got in power and serving him, praying and being dedicated to him. This faith in these things has occurred, young people who are being over Jesus class cross I was off to any problem that's dead. I call the Lord by a in the call of the baptized other in the name of Jesus of Christ. She did they do patience to him now and the of salvation. Remembering your baptism in, in Christ, you're clothed with the breastplate of righteousness. In Christ, you're inserted with the belt of truth. In Christ, you're given a mission, shoes of the gospel of peace and a weapon of your warfare to a sword in the hand, the word of God. And so, because Jesus Christ saved you, now it's the biggest miracle you'll ever experience in your life. And if it's a path faith, you will defeat other enemies in your face. Very small. So, 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 this is the very thing saying your book to always say is, this is the same that Jesus was all that. In this baptism service, we exalt someone too. We stand in awe of someone too. On that day, the Lord exalted the Savior, if you will, Joshua, in the sight of people, so that they stood in awe of him as they passed over. 
This was a forerunner, a picture, Joshua was, of Jesus Christ. Jesus, our the Joshua to come, the greater Joshua, the ultimate Joshua, stands exalted in our midst today. He is why we gather, he is who we proclaim, and so we exalt him. And how much more ought we stand in awe of our Lord Jesus Christ, the great high priest who made a way for us across the Jordan of our sin to guarantee eternal life in the gospel. Finally this morning, like the Jordan crossing, baptism is possible by priesthood a forever memorial preparation for battle, and finally, a covenant signing. Yeah. Upon this event, uh, we have the covenant assurance of signs that follow. We mentioned the altar memorial. Other things were added to it. 5 verse 2. At that time, or, uh, let's see, let's go to verse 5. So all the people came at once. Yeah. It's reason for this uh, covenant ceremony. And uh, we find that Joshua is faithful to be obedient. And something significant is happening. Well, all the people who came out had been circumcised, yet all the people who had born on the way in the wilderness after they had come out of Egypt had not been circumcised. The people of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness until all the nation, the men of war, who came out of Egypt perished because they did not obey the voice of the Lord. The Lord swore to them that he would not let them see the land that their father had sworn to their fathers to give to us. And so, uh, and so we read more reasons uh, why obedience to this covenant sign was followed. And then later, in the next chapter, uh, we also read, or uh, excuse me, in the uh, same chapter, 5 verse 10, the following happens. While the people of Israel were in camp at Gilgal, they kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month in the evening on the plains in Jericho. And the day after the Passover, on that very day, they ate of the produce of the land, unleaded cakes and parched grain. And the manna ceased the day after they ate the produce of the land. And there was no longer manna from the people of Israel, but they ate of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. So here, covenant signs were reinstituted to signify the importance of the Gilgal, the rolling away of reproach, crossing into the promised land. So the uh, circumcision side was reinstituted. And by the way, this is parallel to our event here as well. Likewise, in the new covenant, there are two covenant signs. They are baptism and the Lord's Supper. These correspond to the signs that we see in Joshua and uh, chapter five. Uh, here in Colossians 2, 11, we read, in Revelation, also circumcision. With a circumcision made without hands, by putting off the body of the flesh, by the circumcision of Christ, having been buried within the church, which was in faith of the Lord. He's giving us something practical to remember in God's duplicity. given all your trespasses by canceling the record of death that stood against us with his legal demands. This he set aside and nailed it to the car. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame and tried to think over that he had them. For those who received the covenant sign in the days of Joshua, they had a mark upon their soul and indeed upon their flank that would be with them, reminding them of the significance of this moment. This said, this is an initiation ceremony. It said, you belong to a particular people. God has saved you. This is your new identity now. Do we have anything like that as Christians? Yes, we have baptism. In baptism, I go from being a child of the devil to a child of God. A member of just the worldly system and the condemned sinners of this culture heading to hell. I go from that to being a member of the church of Jesus Christ. who stands according to him as a light to the world that he is the one who saved. There's covenant assurance in baptism. It is a sign of our relationship with him. It's a reminder of who we are. Young people, we live in a culture that is deep in identity crisis. People are willing to go to all the to find out who they are, to our out with identity for themselves, to fit in the expectation of their friends, their family. Who are you? What is the meaning and purpose of life? Where am I to get my affirmation? These are questions that obsessively 
uh, influence people, young people especially, in our day? Well, these questions are answered in your baptism. In your baptism, we don't ever have, have to worry anymore about the insecurity of, am I valuable? What's the purpose of life? And who am I? Think back to your baptism and remember, I belong to Jesus Christ. He died for me. I am a child of God. I have friends and family in and among the people of God. And now I have a calling and a purpose to be a light to others, that they can join me in the waters of baptism into his great name. Then, every day represents a new day. In rolling the way of the crunch of Egypt, and we, we course, uh, which corresponds, of course, to the rolling away of our sins. This rolling away, this reproach representing slavery and bondage to sin. So today in the waters of baptism, God is pictured washing away the reproach of your sin, illustrating the cleansing power of Jesus' blood to wash you as white as snow, to justify you in his sight. In salvation, we recognize from now on that we are a new person. We are born again. That means we have a new identity. God has changed our hearts. Our sins are rolled away. And Jesus, the greater Joshua, is our Savior. Our Savior unto the promised land of glory. Well, for something this amazing, it deserves a feast, a celebration. In two weeks, we will participate at Providence in a feast, in a celebration, the communion table. The people sat down and they celebrated Passover, and they did so in the abundance of the land of Canaan. God has given us a covenant sign likewise at the Lord's table, at communion. We often say, reminding ourselves of our children, the bread that represents his body and the cup that represents his blood are the provisions for us in the wilderness of sin that give us the guarantee of a covenant sign that we could join him in glory but we forever to celebrate and worship because of what he has done. Like the Jordan crossing, baptism is a covenant sign. And it also grants permission, it grants new access to the Lord's table. Likewise, for those baptized today, the communion table is now open to you. Communion choice baptism as the second new covenant sign for the church today. Like the days of old, once a month, we too gather at the table. I get this communion of a feast and fellowship. The gathering at the table will one day give way to the consummate, the fulfillment, marriage supper of the land feast in heaven, the great promised land. And we there will join all the saints who have preceded us in the waters of baptism. Let us thank the Lord for adding to these numbers even 11 from our fellowship today. Grace, let us transition to drought. Father, we thank you for the reassurance of your word, proclaimed the proposition as you read tonight, and your word dramatized and pictured at baptism. I pray that by these two means, these two instruments, no one gathered here today would forget the significance of these moments. And especially for those who will enter these waters, we pray that they would take this assurance with them to the grave. And in taking that assurance of salvation in Jesus Christ with them, and when they cross that river Jordan, at the waters of death one day, they would be welcomed with open arms by all the saints, and especially their exalted worship, worthy and worship, Savior Jesus Christ, the priest who has made a way for us to be restored in fellowship with God the Father, the saints of glory, and the very sovereign of the Lamb forever as we bow in. In his name we come. In his name, man. Doctor. But praise God. So at this time, we've asked those who are about to be baptized to bid you a just teach their faith. This is a public acknowledgement of their trust in Jesus Christ. So I invite those who will be baptized to join me right here. And the job will give you opportunity to tell us, the church, how Jesus Christ has changed your heart. So why don't you join me? Go ahead and come up with your parents if you like. And gather here beside me and we will proceed. Wait up here, guys.
Remember what we told you guys that drinks on? They might feel a little nervous at this side, and you might feel a little chilly. So the beast might just be the means that help you remember this day your whole life. And today, as we stand before us, we as parents and as members of the body of Christ, thank you, the Lord, for this great hand. To let, as I'm telling you guys, so that if you're a would it be awesome? You're at the River Jordan, and then all of a sudden you can walk across on dry land because God created a way. We're at the Red Sea. Well, a miracle has happened in each one of your guys' hearts. God has changed your heart, and that's what we're going to talk about right now. There was a time when you were just a sinner, and you deserve judgment, but God has saved you. So what would you like to share on God changed your heart? You'd like to know first. You know, all right. But this was... You, so, you know, do you have something to share or would you like the answers? I would like that answer to look kind of All right. You know, why do you want to be baptized? I want to be baptized because I feel like Jesus died upon the cross for our souls. Amen. So, you know, were you a sinner? There's. What did you deserve because of your sin? What's the punishment per se? Oh. That's right. And then how can we be saved from our sin? Who died to save you from your sins? Which of us? Do you believe that he died from your sins? Yes, do you guys have a lot of So are you ready to be baptized in his name today? Yes. Imagine. Thanks to you. All right, here's the next. And I'm like, is this Asher? Alexander, oh, I just did you percent of chance. <laughs> All right, Alexander, do you want to be baptized today? Yes. Why do you want to be baptized? Like the three things that are on the trying to put together. Awesome. Have you sinned against God? Yes. Is that a serious thing? Does God come to us? Or do we deserve punishment for our sins? Yes. Is there a way we can pay to our sins? Yes. Who saved you from your Jesus. Do you believe that with water? Yes. Are you ready to be baptized? Yes. So thank you for your testimony. Now we have uh, Sandra. Asher, sorry. They're not me, man. <laughs> <laughs> Asher. And Tuffy. And it's both so. It's a tough place. We have those bases. Asher, do you want to be baptized today? Yes. So, do you know what sin is? Um, yeah. So it was spelling. Did you hear something? I couldn't have That's exactly right. Have you seen the male spelling? Yes. And we deserve punishment because of our sins? Yes. Yeah, this there can be safe. So it's true. Yes. How can you be safe for our sins? Is there somebody that was punished for your sins? Yes. So, hell? What's the name of the person? This is? Amen. This is your savior? Yes. Be ready to be baptized. Good. So, basically, last year, when a battle of service happened, I just didn't get ready. But then the words on a lot of supplies that it told us is for it to be a break. But he is in the let's say by said something. So he ran into the bad types today. It's a cheap guess. Awesome. Thank you for this. And then maybe Sarah will answer some questions. Okay. All right, awesome. So, uh, Tobin, why do you want to be baptized today? So I can be saved from my sins. Awesome. Who saved you from your sins? Jesus did. So, do you know what sins? Yeah, talk. This will be God from his. Have you broken God's rules? Yes. Good question. Do you trust Jesus as your Savior? Good luck. Are you ready to be baptized in his name? Yes. 
in the text. He jumps on the So Charles, can you tell me what sin is? What sin is this? Have you broken God's rules? Uh, is that a serious thing? Yes. Do you sin deserve to be punished? Yes. And is there a way to be saved from your sin? Yes. And who died in your place? Jesus. Are you ready to be baptized in his name today? Yes. I'll suffer. Yes. Thank you. Sonny, I'll share a few things so when I answer some questions. All right. So what's your name, Sonny? Johnny. Oh, awesome. Are you ready to be baptized today? Yes. Why would you like to be baptized today? Oh, how's Dino? Don's Dino watch this. Yes. And why did Jesus have to die? Uh, we broke his law. And uh, do you know what sin? Are, are you a sinner? Have you broken God's rights? Yes. Yeah. Is that a serious thing? Does, do we deserve to be punished for breaking God's law? Yes. Yes. Is there a way for us to be saved from our sins? Yes. And what is that way? How can you be saved from your sins? Is there someone who took that punishment for you? Jesus. Amen. Are you ready to be baptized in his name today? Yes. Oh, sweet. Great spell. All right, Val. Uh, Val, why do you want to be baptized today? Has I want to go in a second. Amen. Has God changed your regret? You know what sin is? And him, he broke his eyes rules and he said he hates it. Is that a serious thing? Yeah. Is there a way for us to be saved from our sins? And, and we don't. Just, we did the death. We love God for sin. Amen. Do you trust Jesus? Save me. Are you ready to be baptized in his name? But hey, testimony. It's worth the area. Thanks. So, do you want to say a few things or do you want to answer some questions? Well, let me start. So, Ruthie, why do you want to be that test? So that I can be so conscious to be Awesome. And what makes us far away from Jesus? We've been talking about it. It's sin. Do you know what sin is? Have you sinned against him? Yes. And is that a serious thing? The sin is there to be punished? Yes. Is there a way to be free from our sins? Yes. Uh, and who died so you can be free from your sin? Jesus. Do you trust Jesus as your Savior from your sins? Forgiveness. Awesome. And are you ready to be baptized in his name today? Yes, those are the ones. So, hey, are you ready? Yes, I, so, hey, do you want to sit in this way? Yeah. It's breaking God's rules, which could be easy. Have you broken God's rules? Yeah. It's not a serious so, thing. Is there a way to be saved from the punishment being served by our sins? You died, me, so you don't have to be to love me your sons. Yes. That's right. Do you trust him as your Savior and your Lord? Yes. Oh. Are you ready to be baptized in his name today? Awesome. Welcome to the Church of Jesus Christ, the King of God, only that is around me, you're ready? Then, one, I'm sad. Yes. So, in John, are you ready to be baptized today? Yes. Awesome. Do you know what sin is? You've been talking to this great big Do you understand that? Have you loved God too much? Is that a serious thing? Okay. That question. So is there a way to save for the punishment that we deserve breaking right? us lost? And if we've done it so we don't have to be punished for our sin. Please. Do you trust that Jesus died for your sin? Awesome. Do you trust that him as the lead and carry the way you are? Thanks. Awesome. Are you ready to be baptized in his name today? Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, let's give the Lord a hand and worship the pain. Thank you, uh, young people, for sharing with us a testimony of how God has changed your heart and your understanding of the gospel. So it'll take a few minutes here to transition, but just beyond this wall behind you is a kind of public beach, sandy area down there. So as you're able, we'll relocate. We'll give those who will be baptized an opportunity to get um, uh, clothes that can get wet on and things like that. And then in a matter of, I don't know, 10 minutes or so, we will continue the service waterside with the baptism ceremony. So join us in a moment as we're able.